cannot, I think, at the time, be thinking of those things about how, you know, you've, you, if you think about the millions of viewers that things like Miranda or something like that gets, it doesn't, I think after a certain figure, you can't equate it, particularly when you do stand-up comedy club gigs, playing to 100 people, a couple hundred people, on a good night, 600, 700 maybe, I think I've topped at about 1,500 or 2,000, and you, I know what that looks like, I don't, I don't know what 8 million people looks like, you can't think of that. And, uh, but it's incredible to think that that has that knock-on effect. And, but we all have that in that our everyday lives, and there's that idea of the butterfly flapping its wings, causing a hurricane across the world. And you know, as human beings, how much more can we do? You know, because we are, we're bigger than butterflies. We can talk to people, influence people. Even when we don't think of it or know that we're influencing people, we are influencing people by what we say or what we don't say, what we do or what we don't do. And so we are all being like this. We're all being these butterflies out there. And we just got to, you know, flap in the right direction, and you can cause great things over there. Um, and it's very important to realise that. I think it's it's a responsibility. I think as a human to know that you're doing that. And and, and so yeah, it's it's a great thing to be able to do things like that. And uh, but I think being constructive and being positive and being creative, I think are the the ways I prefer to do things. And you know, and I've not, I've been to churches before where there've been petitions and demands and things and. Um, uh, and which you can do, you know, if you see them on TV you don't like, it's quite good actually to let the broadcasters know because they might change it. But at the same time, in my position, when there's a problem in a script, when there's uh, a bit of the script I don't like, it's going a little bit too sex, drugs, rock and roll perhaps, or a little bit too anti-religion, or just a little bit too, you know, you can have characters that are like that, and that's fair enough, some shows do need that. But for example, 8.30, BBC One, Family Audience, I don't know that you want too much of that stuff. And that's more my problem. You know, I think there's a time and a place for everything. I don't want to be a censor, but I think at that time of night when you've got kids watching, you don't want that sort of stuff. Particularly if there's child actors involved, that's happened as well. In those times, if there's a script, I've got a bit I don't like. I don't, I don't want to be the guy who stands up and say, I've got a problem with this, uh, we shouldn't do this, because as a Christian, I am going to now be a stone in your shoe and be annoying about this, and I'll write a letter. and. They won't, you know, they, they'll sigh and they'll, they might go along on this occasion, but next time they'll find a way to exclude me from the room because I'm a troublemaker. No problem with a Christian being a troublemaker. We can certainly, we're called to do that. At the same time, to try and get in the room next time, I think no, I want to be constructive, creative about this and try and do sort of the positive side of things. So what I do is I look at these lines where there's a problem, try and think of something funnier, try and think of something better, try and think of something more creative, more constructive that can replace it and can be more, I think, hopefully fitting of God's kingdom and just be more a positive influence on the world than some of the lines you look at and think, well, that's this isn't a positive influence on the world. Some lines you look at and it in, involves, I don't know, I've, I've had scripts I've looked at, it involves self-harming or things that you think are in, innocent enough as a joke or whatever, but you think if, if eight million people are going to watch this, it just takes a few people to look at this and take it the wrong way and it, it can have a negative impact on society. So there are responsibilities there, but on the small micro level, we, we've all got the, you, know, you walk out the house and you've got these responsibilities as well. So I think it's important we all take those, uh, take those in line and don't take them for granted. You've got to make time for those questions at some point really. And even if you're putting it off, you've got to, you'll find that time at some point and, and, uh, and it's, it's essential you do really. Which is why I think if there's opportunities to ask those questions, whether it's the Alpha course, whether it's just people from church, your friends in the pub, people at the dinner table, um, you've got to ask questions. You've got to wonder what else is there to this. And I think we all know, I've, I've known friends and housemates before who've, um, they, they drift through life. And yeah, they have good days, they have bad days. They sort of have days where they think, I don't need anything else. Look at me, I'm happy, I'm the Mr. Party guy. But then there's the come down. Then they go, actually, you know what? It's a bit bleak. And, and, uh, and the nice thing is that I don't so much have that. And, and people of a faith I know don't have that so much because we've got that, there's a constant going through our lives a lot more. And I think we all really sort of think that actually there is something more to it, that it's, it's, it's too much, I think, to think that we are just here on this planet and we've come about to, to, to this existence from just ourselves. And so I, I think just ask the questions is what I'd say. Just ask people stuff. Just, you know, the church, the course, the pub, whatever. Ask people these sort of questions. And yes, you'll have some answers. Maybe some you want to hear, some you don't want to hear. People will give you different answers. But, and don't expect the questions are going to go away as well. They will become more questions. Even the people giving you the answers, whether they're on a, a stage or on a platform, uh, they're going to have more questions and they keep going throughout life. But the thing is, 
if you don't start trying to address the questions early on, then there's just going to be more and more chucked at you and you're not going to know. So um, just keep puzzling it through. I think it's important that we just devote a little bit of our time uh, to our lives to, to puzzle those things through. We've got, you know, I mean, it's, it's a God-given thing is the weekend that we can actually take a bit of time off work. And there's this pressure to have a seven-day work life or, you know, the Facebook and things. You can't turn things off constantly uh, you're on the go thinking I've got to get back to this game of words with friends it's important but no just give yourself a bit of time and just just have a think have a chat with people ask a few questions I think you know you won't regret it uh, yes I've written a book called so a comedian walks into a church uh, which is about comedy and church and uh, yeah really it's reflective of the fact that I'm on the road most weekends and I ended up for ages not having a home church and uh, and it was tricky so I'd end up going to different churches on the road every weekend I'd be somewhere different and I'd be going to Anglican, Methodist, Catholic all these different types of church and I thought it's quite they're all quite different but they've all got these core things the same and they're all doing something right as well um, the fact that they're all getting people through the doors and there's this stereotype that church numbers are dwindling but actually church numbers in certain places are thriving um, some are, are getting smaller but some are increasing and I, I, I thought it was quite interesting to just note what those things were at the same time the mirror image of that I found was the comedy circuit where equally you've also got a broad range of comedy gigs and again numbers are up numbers are down so I thought let's put it together and just have a little look at the world of comedy and the world of the church and uh, and see what it is like really to sort of compare all those and have a bit of fun along the way so I found it a great experience I've never written a book before but I loved it I'm now working on the next one because um, yeah, rather than working on Miranda Hart's script or something like that, I guess you get you get a blank page. And it's brilliant to have a blank page, but what a responsibility to think, well, you've got to fill it with. So uh, I hope that the rubbish I have filled it with is, is amusing at least.